Is your Adam's apple really an Adam's apple? Everyone knows that Adam and Eve ate from an apple, right? Wrong! There's not a single legitimate source that says that Adam and Eve ate from an apple tree. How about them apples? I'm Pinchas Taylor, and this is Taylor Talks. Hey everyone, thanks so much for checking out Taylor Talks. I hope you follow us on our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's jump right into it. So why does everyone think that it's an apple? The tree that Adam and Eve were not supposed to eat from in the Garden of Eden was called the Tree of Knowledge of Good and Evil. In the entire episode of Adam and Eve eating from the forbidden fruit, it never once mentions what that fruit was. Most cultural references are to apples. You have the Adam's apple, you have Apple and Eve, the apple juice company, and you have a lot of old paintings of naked Adam and Eve eating from an apple tree. Whoa, get these out of here. So why does everyone think apple? It all started with a mistranslation in the 4th century. The Bible was translated from language to language. And just like when you translate anything, words are changed and meanings are distorted. The Torah was translated from Hebrew to Greek, then Greek to Latin, and then Latin to Old English. And I saith unto thee that this is where the problem beganeth. In the Latin translation of the Bible, the word malum, evil, can also mean apple. People misassociated the words and assumed that Adam and Eve came into contact with malum, evil, through the malum, apple. So what kind of tree was it? The Talmud talks about this very topic but never reaches an actual conclusion. It might have been a wheat stalk, might have been an etrog, might have been a grapevine, or might have been a fig leaf. We'll get back to the Talmud in a second, but first I want to talk about Michelangelo. Interestingly, in Michelangelo's depiction on the Sistine Chapel, he depicts the Tree of Knowledge as a fig tree. Roy Dolliner, a Vatican tour guide, explains that there's surprisingly a lot of Jewish undertones in Michelangelo's paintings. Maybe Michelangelo was a... Nah, let's not go there. The Medrash teaches that the Torah never mentions specifically what fruit it was in order to preserve the dignity of Adam and Eve. This is why the Talmud never comes to an official conclusion. If we knew specifically what kind of fruit it was, then every time we would eat that fruit, we would think of the very first sin of Adam and Eve. Additionally, the sages were concerned with even preserving the dignity of the tree, so we shouldn't look scornfully at it every time we pass it. Well. We didn't find out what type of tree it really was, and I guess we'll never know if this should really be called an Adam fig. But there is one very valuable takeaway. I can barely imagine what it means to be sensitive even to the feelings of a plant, but that's where God sets the bar. If we're supposed to be that careful about a plant's feelings, just imagine how sensitive we have to be to our fellow human beings. So next time you find yourself in a situation where you want to say something negative, just remember the Adam fig and be a little more sensitive. Wait, 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 don't leave yet. I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons who help support what we do. If you want to become a patron and help us support what we do, please visit our Patreon link in the description.